Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Way Slam reviewer, and I'm here to review The Eyes of Tammy Faye. And this is from director Michael Showalter, who previously done films like Hello, My Name is Doris with Sally Fields, The Big Sick, which absolutely love that film, has done some work on shows like Search Party and Love, which I'm a huge fan of Love, and most recently directed The Lovebirds, which I had a lot of fun with, honestly, and this film takes on the story of Tammy Faye Baker, who was a televangelist who loved people and wanted to connect with people no matter what their background was, whether they're gay or had AIDS or from different backgrounds, maybe you weren't religious, like she just loved people and she wanted to sing and she came from a home where she didn't have a lot of respect in her religious community because she was the daughter of a previous marriage before her mother got remarried and after a divorce and you know setting up this whole entire story you know it's a standard biopic we get from when she was a child all the things that troubled her as a child all the way up until you know present day and up until, I have to say, a really, really effective and entertaining and just flashy and big finale. This musical number that just tacks on at the end to give like a big exclamation point at the end of the film. It was so obnoxious and over the top and just so wonderful. Just to start there. But this film, Show Walter, gives us a pretty straightforward yet very entertaining biopic. From start to finish, I was very entertained by this film, even if, like, I've seen these beats all the time, and, like, this is definitely, if this came out before the movie Walk Hard, Walk Hard would have made fun of it, kind of thing. It's like, you've seen these kinds of things before, and nothing's going to be particularly surprising here. And you also have, from a narrative perspective, you're trying to cram in so many things into a two-hour and six-minute film. There's definitely moments where the timeline and the story feel truncated at the negative of the story. Things feel like, okay, we're jumping right there already. And I'm like, I felt like it could have used a little bit more fleshing out before we jumped right to this spot. But the thing is, you're trying to cram so much stuff into it. And there's definitely threads that feel like they're dropped, like they're kids just magically disappear. And it's just like, um, what happened? And... It's interesting because it doesn't seem like her their daughter really wanted this film to be made at this point because like I never heard of Tammy Faye Baker and I've only heard of Jim Baker recently because he's an anti-vaxxer and talking a lot about stuff like that. Like I heard of some of these other televangelists like Jerry Falwell. I definitely heard of Pat Pat of uh, um yeah Pat Patterson not Pat Patterson Pat Robertson thinking of pro wrestler getting my pats mixed up. But the thing is, like, Pat Robertson, like, my grandma watched The 700 Club all the time. Didn't know he didn't invent The 700 Club, according to this Jim Baker. So, there you go. Interesting things you learn watching a movie. So, like, I only heard of this kind of stuff because, like, my grandmother was very religious and would watch The 700 Club. So, like, I knew who some of these people were. And then it's very interesting seeing this story. And really what makes this story, this film, is the performances are amazing. Jessica Chastain is killing it in this film. She is doing so, so much with what a lot of people would see as a caricature of a person, but she makes, there's so much empathy, and there's also moments that she really takes charge and is like a strong woman and isn't going to take people's crap. And, like, her forcing her way to the men's table at Pat Robertson's house. Um, at the end, confronting these teenagers who are obviously making fun of her. And you have all of those things where it's like she wasn't going to take this stuff lying down. And also, she was very human. She was horny. And there's a lot of moments like that throughout this film. And, like, it's like, okay, this film's going there. And there were some fun moments throughout the film with that, but, like, Jessica Chastain really brings presence to this character, and this doesn't just feel like a caricature. This is a human being, and Jessica Chastain plays all aspects. And then you have Andrew Garfield, who's just fantastic as well as Jim Baker, who's sleazy, and you, like, there's a point where they start having an argument in this film, and you're just like, ooh, 
and you could feel it and it gets harsh and just disrespectful and contentious and it's just like dang it's tough to watch and that's the thing about this it's like they had such a complex relationship and like you have Jim Baker who's really representing that like televangelist thing it's like you God doesn't want us to be poor you know like Jesus lived a life of poverty you know but the thing is like there's and it hits on those kinds of things in a very basic kind of way there definitely could have been a lot more depth and target on that kind of thing about it there's a th few throwaway lines where it's like a little remorseful of like why they were so rich and stuff like that but like they didn't confront that as much as they could have I do appreciate there's little details throughout the screenplay that build some tension and build some mystery throughout. And then you have supporting actors like Vincent D'Onofrio as Jerry Falwell. He's great. He's so slimy and just, he is such a presence. And Cherry Jones is a real MVP here. I loved her as Tammy Faye's mother. She's fantastic. She has some great moments. And she's a really underappreciated actress. And I hope that she gets a little bit of Best Supporting Actress attention, because, like, I really loved her in this film. If Jessica Chastain doesn't get nominated for Best Actress, just go home. Like, what are you doing? Because she killed it. Performances are amazing. It's a really entertaining film. There definitely could have been more depth and focus, and I felt like they sacrificed a lot of depth for space trying to cover as much land covering as much yardage as possible and just like and that's a tricky balance in a biopic because it's like do you make it a straight character study like say Steve Jobs where it's just like three specific points and like it feels really artificial and convenient how that's structured but like it's still you get depth there here or do you just go the coast to coast of life and it's very hard to make that work, and I feel like films like Ray knock that out of the park for me and walk the line. But, like, those are, like, the very great ones. Not every film is able to really do that kind of story justice, because there's just so much to go over. But in the end, I really liked The Eyes of Tammy Faye. I thought it was really enjoyable, and I hope many people go out and support it this weekend and moving forward. But those are my thoughts on the film. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.